Welcome to Apache ActiveMQ Essentials. I'm Jamie Goodger. We have five minutes on a countdown timer. We're going to talk about Apache ActiveMQ up next. Let's start our exploration of Apache ActiveMQ with the website. You're going to want to browse to activemq.apache.org. Once you get here to our homepage, we're going to start telling you about what our project provides. Effectively, it is an implementation of the Java message service, including the broker, the backend service, and the clients you'll need to be able to connect to it to send and receive messages. Let's take a look a little bit at the high-level architecture of a classic JMS system. It's going to include JMS clients and a JMS server. The client will be able to send and or receive messages from a particular destination. In the case of ActiveMQ, that will be either from a queue or a topic. See our other videos for the distinction between the two. A typical communication flow would be a message producer sends a message to a particular destination, a queue, on the broker, the JMS provider, and a consumer is going to be listening to that queue at that destination and will receive a copy of that message. Okay, so let's go back to the website. So when you get to our homepage, you're going to be, scroll down a little bit and you're going to see that there's actually two types of ActiveMQ, Classic and Artemis. We are going to be discussing the Classic ActiveMQ broker. You can click Find Out More to take a look at the particular protocols and specs that are supported. For the purposes of the video, we're going to go to the download page and we're going to look for the 616 latest release as of March 10th, 2025, and then head down towards the downloads. Uh, on our way down here, I'm going to note that we are at Jakarta JMS spec level 2 with partial support of 3.1 spec and we base at a minimum of Java 17. Heading down to the download section, we'll see that we have classic 6.16 and we are working on a Mac system, so we're going to download Apache ActiveMQ 616 bin tar gz. If you're on Windows, you download the zip. So we have downloaded kit and used the tar command to extract it from the gz. Once we're inside of our kit, we're going to find a couple of folders, including the bin folder, which contains all of our start and stop scripts for various environments. We have a conf folder, which contains all of our configurations. In here, the one you're going to be most interested in beginning is ActiveMQ XML, where you're able to set all the parameters for how the broker works, how much memory it uses, and what type of connectors it's going to be using. We also have in here our data folder, where our Kaha DB for persistence live and all the logs from the broker, and we have a large set of examples. We're going to take a look at the OpenWire example for Java. The OpenWire Java demo is set up to show us how to use Java JMS APIs to talk to ActiveMQ. In this case, we're going to be using a publisher that will connect to ActiveMQ and then create a connection to an ActiveMQ topic and start sending messages in. A listener application is then created that will connect to that same ActiveMQ broker and then subscribe to that topic and pull the messages out. Let's go over to a terminal and show you how this runs. In the terminals above me, I have set up a console for our broker, publisher, and consumer applications. In our console for the broker, I'm going to show you the version of Java we're using, 21, and then kick off the broker with the ActiveMQ console command. That's going to send all the logs to the terminal, and we can see that indeed AMQ 616 has started. Let's go over to our consumer application and get that running. And now we're going to switch over to the publisher. The publisher sends its 10,000 messages into the destination, i.e. the broker. And then on the consumer side, we see those messages are there, pick them up, and we can start processing them. So now that we've demonstrated the broker, producers, and consumers, or subscribers, and their ability to have the broker be the place where messages go in and other applications read them out. You can now start applying this towards event-driven architectures where the broker supports it by being the place where the event lands and some other service reads it to kick off a workflow. Or for loosely coupled services where the broker enables all of them to communicate with each other. We hope you've enjoyed this quick five minute introductory tutorial to ActiveMQ Classic. We have other videos covering ActiveMQ Broker and JMS Spec on our channel. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell for notification when we put up our brand new episodes. Have a great day. Cheers.